Oh, you guys, <gasps> welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about the worst makeup of 2021. So Spicy Morgan is here. If you can't handle the spice, drink some milk or just go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But if I do talk about a product that you like and I'm really mean to it, don't, it's okay. As you know, products work differently for everybody. We all have our own opinion and I'm happy that it worked out for you. Uh, I'm sure there's more products that that I didn't like in 2021 that I forgot to reach or something like that but or I decluttered it but I was going through my makeup collection and I was looking at products and my criteria for this video was when I look at it what products make me mad you know there's just some products where I look at them and I'm like I'm mad that you're not good so that's what we're talking about today. The products that made me mad. So I'm actually wearing a full face of this worst makeup. <laughs> I will have a video coming up very soon where you'll see the struggle. But without further ado, let's get into the, the worst stuff. And eyeshadow palettes will be a separate video, by the way. This is just, anyways, let's get into it. So the first product is a makeup wipe. Do not buy the e.l.f. makeup remover cleansing cloths. These make my skin burn. They're terrible and they really don't get makeup off. You have to rub and tug on your eyes to get your makeup off. So just don't do it. Just don't put yourself through that. I ended up buying a two pack of these and I'm, I was sad because I had so many. So I've been using these to get the swatches off my arms, which honestly, even though I'm saying how terrible these are, I would consider repurchasing these again because they're great for getting the swatches off my arms. Don't let these go near your face. They're terrible. Let's start off now with the makeup in the face primer section. I have two. So the first one is the one which you will see in my full face video, but this is the Dior Forever Skin Veil. I don't necessarily know that this is terrible. Like this doesn't make my makeup worse. It doesn't make the wear time worse. It's just an extra layer on the skin that is nothing. And you guys know Dior is a very pricey brand. I just paid a lot of money for this to do nothing. I still use it to this day. My toxic trait, and I tweeted this at, when I was pulling out these products, <laughs> my toxic trait is that I use makeup I don't like more than the makeup that I do like because I want to make the bad makeup work. Like I just can't accept the fact that it's not good. I think to myself, it must be me. It must be the products that I'm putting it together with. I spend more of my time wearing makeup I don't like trying to get myself to like it. <laughs> so I'm still using this regularly in my makeup routine, but I don't recommend it because it does nothing. <laughs> the next product is the same situation. It just costs a lot less. This is a little bit more drying to the skin though. This is the NYX, the Marshmallow Primer. This was trending on TikTok, so I know so many of you like it. I just don't understand. It does nothing. I feel like it dries my face out. I don't get it. This is more of a shock because I, I don't get it. It does nothing for me. So this is like not a good primer. I tried a lot of amazing primers this year, which is why the list is kind of boring. They just don't do anything. But these brands got it figured out, but NYX for this primer didn't, in my opinion. I don't get it. Eyebrows. I, there was another eyebrow product from Maybelline that I knew I didn't like, but I decluttered it and don't know what it was called. But it's similar to this. So this is another eyebrow product from Maybelline that I tried this year that was terrible. This is the Maybelline Express Brow Eyebrow Pencil. And it's so weird. So first of all, there is the pencil side, which is way too creamy. It looks patchy in my eyes eyebrows like my eyebrows just don't look good it looks my eyebrows look patchy with this the formula itself doesn't blend out very well but it also has this gimmicky little powder thing so you press this sponge in the cap and it's supposed to deposit powder to your eyebrows it's a gimmick terrible don't recommend this the drugstore has some great eyebrow pencils. I recommend looking in the direction of NYX or ColourPop. And Maybelline themselves even has some good products for the eyebrows. So I don't know what's going on with those. Oh, I don't know. Let's talk foundation. We're going to go in first with the one that I'm wearing right now. This is the Huda Beauty Luminous Matte Full Coverage Foundation. This is way too thick and heavy and dry on my skin. Now I do have more normal to dry skin. It's currently leaning more dry because it's winter time. But you can see the foundation itself just sitting on top of my skin and it emphasizes texture. It just kind of ages me. It does not look good. I it looks better on camera. It is not a bad camera foundation, but in person, every time I wear this foundation, I look at myself and I'm like, 
Honey. Ugh, uh, so this just doesn't look good. The way that I could get it to work is if I put on a thin layer or I thin it out with a little bit of oil. It looks okay, but by itself, if you put more than one layer over the skin, mm, it ain't good. I have a very similar experience with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. And this kind of has the same problems that I have with the Huda Beauty, but it also wears terribly. It breaks up on my face so quickly and I just look rough within a few hours. I find this useful in some cases. I like to mix this into very thin tinted moisturizers because I feel like this formulation gives that tinted moisturizer more oomph and coverage, but on its own, it's thick, it doesn't wear good, it breaks up, it needs something really, really hydrating and lightweight to get this to work. And obviously for a luxury priced foundation, you shouldn't have to mix it with other foundations. I also have the Huda Beauty Glowish multi Dew Skin Tint. You can totally make this work if you mix it it with the right, right products but this on its own is literally a highlighter for your face it emphasizes all the texture I just think they went very very wrong with the marketing of this product if they had marketed this as something to mix in with your foundation think more like the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter something like that this product would make more sense but as a literal skin tint it's a liquid highlighter for the face and that is not a good look unless your skin is poor Poreless, flawless. Don't talk to me. If you have a little bit of pores and texture, this is not going to look good. I also have the... This makes me mad because... <laughs> It's good, but the application is horrific. This is the Kyer Weiss Cream Foundation. When this is on and it's all said and done, I love the way it looks. It's super natural, but I feel like I go through half the pan every time I try and apply it. It's just so dry and hard to build up. Your fingers don't even warm it up. And you guys did advise me to mix it with oil. It's supposed to be applied with an oil, and I did that, and I still can't stand this. I feel like I go through so much product when I use this, and this is not cheap. Kyer Weiss is pricey, but the packaging is so cheap. I... It makes me mad because this foundation actually is nice. Like it looks nice, but the application is absolutely horrific. And finally, I also want to talk about the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I just don't have it because I decluttered it, but this works very similarly to the Best Skin Ever from Sephora. This is the Morphe Filter Foundation or whatever. I don't know. This does not wear good and it sits on top of the skin. It's just not a flattering, hydrating enough a foundation for me. And I can't stand how it breaks up so quickly, but Compared to the other foundations that I was just talking about, this is significantly cheaper, so it doesn't make me quite as mad, but I just have to let you know I don't recommend this. It's one of the worst formulas I've tried this year. Moving into powder, these two powders were in my worst makeup of 2021 that I did in the middle of the year, but it's carrying over to now because they're still like the worst powders that I've tried. So this one I think goes down as the worst. This is by Beauty Blender. This is the Soft Focus Gemstone setting powder. This has the most unflattering sheen to it, especially when you get in this T-zone area where most of the pores lie on most people. This makes the pores pop out because the sheen is so sheeny. I don't know. It looks like a really, really soft highlighter to be honest, but it does not blur the skin at all. It does the opposite. If you put it on the forehead, it will show those fine lines as well. Mm, this I think would work better potentially as like an all over over finishing powder with very very little product but it it says it's a setting powder and if you set your face with this it is terrible I used it today so keep an eye out for the full face video and you'll be able to see it literally emphasizing my pores and then if you want something that's going to dry your skin out then you have to give the Tatcha the silk powder a go because this makes my under eyes look thirsty it's extra disappointing because this is so pricey and Tatcha has such a great reputation of just producing phenomenal products and man did they miss the ball on this it's just dry that's the only word I can use to describe this powder is dry, and we don't want that. I have a number of cream products to talk about. I guess this was the year of creams, so I gave a lot of shots, and 
<laughs> okay, so we're gonna start off with the big guys here. This is from Chanel. This year I tested out their Balm Essential Multi-Use Stick Formulation. I just don't understand this formula. I picked up two shades. One is in Golden Light, okay? This gives a little bit of color, and I gave this the benefit of the doubt because I bought it originally to try and use it as a bronzer. I quickly found out when they said balm, they meant like basically it looks like a lip balm. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I don't know about the sheen for the outer part of my face. And it didn't give the color that I saw on the website. I gave it one more chance. They came out with another collection and I picked up Printanier. Keep in mind, they came out with multiple colors in that collection. And what I just cannot grasp is why they do not sell this in just one color. Because look at this, Printanier looks quite pink. Nothing. It's just a clear gloss. And I am flabbergasted at the fact that they have the nerve to come out with multiple collections that include these with multiple colors when you're getting the same clear balm finish. It's nuts to me. Why even come out with different colors? They're not going to show up. Anyways, I mean, I'm not a big fan of that balm texture anyways, but that's just more so personal preference. They just charge so much for a clear balm and they trick you with all of the colors. And anyways, I have a similar story to the Ilia multi-use sticks. So I like these better than the Chanel. I'm actually wearing a little bit of Tenderly on my cheeks today and I did give a little bit of color, but these are exactly like the Chanel, but just a little bit more pigmented, but it's still not enough color to really warrant the name of a multi-use stick. So this is a darker color. You can see there's a little bit of color and then let me show you tenderly which is a little bit pinkier it's just like why and I noticed this formulation it is a multi-use stick you're supposed to be able to use it on your lips this really clings onto the dryness on your lips and it's not really cute anyways so I just don't see a purpose to this they hardly show up and they don't even look good on the lips it's really not multi-purpose there is no purpose but anyways, okay, apparently I really hate multi-sticks because the last one that I have is from e.l.f. I have a couple other colors to try, so I don't know if it's just this color, but this Dazzling Peony, I was so excited for these because I thought that this could be a great dupe for all of these high-end multi-sticks. And oh my gosh, it looks so promising. Like, look, at least this one gives you some color, but... It breaks up whatever you are wearing underneath like terribly. If this didn't break up what you had underneath, I would love this stick. I would recommend it, but yeah, no, it just like completely makes the makeup disappear underneath. <laughs> so not good. And then the last liquid or cream cheek product that I have is from Natasha Denona, and that is the Puff Paint Liquid Blush Serums. Now this darkest shade right here, this one isn't bad. It's the two lighter shades. They just disappear in like minutes, like right before your eyes. Layer and layer and layer this on the cheek and you blend it out and you're like, okay, like that's pretty. I can make that work. I can, you know, I can wear this today and then it just like disappears and I just don't, I just don't understand. Like I feel like if you're very fair you might want to give these a chance but on my skin tone like no they just disappear into thin air they're way too expensive to do that but anyways I'm thirsty. In terms of a pretty boring and useless face palette, this is from NARS. So this is the Pleasure Trip palette. It's not that the quality is bad. Quite honestly the quality is pretty good but it's just the oddest, most boring trio. And my expectations are so high for NARS. Like when I reviewed this, I was like, I mean, it's, it works. The quality's not bad, but it's just a big fat why. You have a basic bronzer, a shimmery blush, and a highlight that's quite subtle, which it's not bad. I like face trios, but there's something about this that is so boring. I honestly forgot about it. Like I forgot this existed and this launched in the later half of this year and I have a good memory when it comes to my makeup, okay? I know my collection, like the back of my hand, even though it's quite large, this slipped through the cracks. I completely forgot about it and then I looked at it last night and I got mad. I was like, why would NARS come out with this? This is so boring, so. I actually am not discouraging you <laughs> from picking this up, this Pleasure Trip Cheek Palette. I don't know, NARS can do better. I also have this palette from NARS, but you guys 
guys know I've been hating on this. This has been in the forefront of hate. <laughs> <laughs> this is the NARS High Profile Cheek Palette. Every single shade in here looks the same on your cheek. So the blush itself, fine formula, you know, high quality, you can tell. But there are five blush shades in here and it doesn't matter which shade you use, they're going to all look the same. And you pay a lot of money for this pretty little palette. Like I love the packaging, I was so excited for it. But you're literally getting one blush shade in this entire palette. You are paying entirely way too much for all of these blushes to look the same. One of the most important things about blush palettes to me are that the shades are going to look different on the cheek, that there's actually variety. The point of it being a palette is there. This did not check that box and it was highly disappointing because I know how good of a formula NARS can create. So I just, I don't understand. NARS has been so inconsistent lately, which is why I've been testing these products out to let you know like what is worth it and what is not. That's not. Very disappointed. Okay, the last blush that I have to talk about was a huge, huge letdown from Dior. Now, Dior has my all-time favorite blush formula, which is what is making me so mad, okay? I always talk about how great Dior blushes are. I pick up every single D blush Dior launches because they always end up like at the top of my all-time favorite blush lists. And then Little Miss Hologram came around. Okay, so this is from the Atelier of Dreams collection, which is their holiday collection. And the shade's name, like I said, is Hologram, but I didn't realize like they literally meant Hologram. Dior's pinky blushes, they do it best. They always have the best undertone of pink blushes. But look at this. You can even see in the pan, it is pure glitter. And when you swatch it, there is no true pink base to it. It is just a sheen of pink with lots of glitter in it. I'm wearing it on my cheek. I have so much glitter on my cheek. This is not cute. I've never had a blush from Dior that contained glitter. And even if it did, I still loved it because I've never come across a Dior blush that I didn't like. So this one, this one made me mad. Like why would they do that? It looks horrible. In the sun, I look like a glitter bomb. So pass. Okay, let's <laughs> <laughs> it's not that serious. I promise you I'm not getting that mad. But let's move on to highlights. So the first one I've talked about a lot recently. This is the Fenty Diamond Bomb Triple Drip All Over Diamond Veil Powder. I don't know. The formulation of this, I just don't understand. This is a, you either love it or you hate it. I applied it on my cheek today. Too much glitter. It's a putty formula. I like this on my body. And they do encourage you to use this like on your body and on your face wherever you want. But on the face, oh, this is a big waste of money. I, I, the colors all look the same to me. Mm, it's just glitter, glittery. Yeah, okay. This one, it's not bad. You know, it's not like it can't perform and it can't look good. It's just that it's by Huda Beauty and my standard for Huda Beauty is so high. This is the Light Glow Obsessions Mini Face Palette and this is one of the worst highlights that I've tried this year. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's the worst, but the standard for highlights nowadays is up. You know, I haven't come across a brand recently that can't give me a decent highlight formula, and I would think Huda Beauty, of all people, would be able to master that. Not with this. This is like an unflattering highlight formula. Like, it's okay. I've used it recently. It's not worth not using, but it does emphasize texture on my cheek that I'm not necessarily a big fan of. It almost looks a little dry and chunky. And that's me looking very close into a mirror. You know, from afar, I really don't mind using this for every day. It's a highlight, it adds a glow. But when I look really close, I'm not liking what I'm seeing from this. And just knowing Huda Beauty and the caliber of the brand, they should be able to give us like at least a decent highlight formula. So I just don't understand these quads. I don't. Okay, so that was all face. Lots of face products I have a toot about. <laughs> Let's go on to eyes now. So we're going to start off with an eye primer, which is the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. So performance wise, this is fine. It just dried out so quickly, like within a week. So when I bought this, I liked it. I was like, oh, this is great. This is a good concept. But the amount of strength I have to put into my 
finger rubbing these to get it to warm up so that it will be a little bit more malleable on my eyelid. It's crazy and it really causes me to have to tug at my eyelid which is such a delicate area. You do not want to dig at that part of your eye. But yeah, these are like super dry. Performance wise, it's fine. You know, I like the way eyeshadow applies on top. I like the longevity of the shadow. It's great, but it, it's a waste of your money because it dries out so quickly. Let's talk about what is on my eyes right now. This thing. And I know so many people love it, but maybe it's the color I got. This is the Danessa Myricks Moonlight Chroma whatever. Chrome Flakes. Ugh. I don't, I don't like this at all. It might be this color, but it's, it reminds me of like the glitter that I played with as a child. There's no color base to it and it's just chunky flakes. And I do understand it's called like a flake product, but I thought it would be better. When I saw the examples and all of that, I was really, really excited for this. I hate the way that it looks. It takes forever to dry. It messes up the eyeshadow I have on underneath. My eyeshadow underneath looks patchy because of the gel in this product. It just removed the eyeshadow that I had on underneath. And I had to sit in my chair for like two to three minutes with this fan on my eyes so that this product was dry and then my eyeballs felt stiff. <laughs> and if I don't wait for it to dry, if you have hooded eyelids, it's going to cause the lid to stick together, which will then cause a really creasy look. Look, it's just a recipe for disaster. I don't understand this product. I like I have strong feelings about that. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, the next product is also kind of like a lid topper thing, but much more expensive. These are from Chanel. They are the Ombre Premier Lac for the eyes. Particularly this shade right here is really bad. I don't really mind the ivory shade, but this bronze shade is so patchy. And with liquid shadows, you can, you, you'll find that with the darker shades, it can be more difficult. But for this being Chanel, my standards are high. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, you spend a lot of money on this, super duper patchy. If you watch my original review on this, it is just a complete disaster. I'm sure you can make it work, whatever, but you shouldn't have to. The lighter shades I think you'll be fine with if you're interested in these, but this shade in particular, bronze, patchy terrible had to keep relayering didn't like it let's keep it moving to eyeliners i have two that i picked out for you i guess three but two liquid liners so the first one is the one that i'm wearing which honestly isn't as bad as i thought it was i think the first few times that i've used this i've worn eyeshadow looks that were a little bit too intense so i can tell you this doesn't work well over really textured shadows glitter shadows anything like that if you're just like an everyday eyeshadow wearer i think you'll be fine for this but i noticed the longer that I used it the more gray that it got. Oh, this is the <laughs> Sephora Colorful Wink It Felt Liner, liquid liner. And I also noticed it is a bit of a thinner formula, so you might need to go over it a couple times to get the opacity that you want, but it's also quite liquidy. So if you do have a lot of fine lines in your eyelid, you might notice this formula kind of swimming up those fine lines because it's a little bit too liquidy. It's not as bad as I thought. I pulled it because I thought this was terrible. I use it today, it's not that bad, but I don't recommend it. So I'm just going to keep it here. Now the Natasha Denona Macro Blade Liquid Liner is the next liner that I have. Listen, I have a love-hate relation chip with this. Generally speaking, I, I don't mind it, but it really truly is a very liquidy formula. And I love how black it is, but I don't really love the applicator. It is way too wet. The quality of this liner is nice because it's super duper black, you know, but it's really liquidy and hard to control and swims up those lines. <laughs> So close, but not quite there. I really don't like it. Every time I use it, I kind of have to hold my breath. It lasts good, it's nice and black, but I'm really disappointed with how liquidy the formula is. The last pencil or eyeliner I suppose that I have is from Rem Beauty. This is just, I gotta get way too aggressive with it. This is the Cole eyeliner pencil. I have mine in the shade So Mod, which is a white, but the amount of strength and going back and forth I have to do to get it to be as white as you can see is just way too 
hard on my eyes. If you have any sort of like sensitive eyes where you don't love having liners put in your waterline, steer clear of this, especially with this white shade or the lighter shades at the very least because it's not creamy at all. This is a hard pencil. It lasts a long time. That is where I will give it a little bit of credit, but it is just too rough on the eyes. Ugh, I don't like it. Okay, let's move on to mascaras. I have two, and unfortunately, they are both from e.l.f. I love e.l.f. I've discovered some fabulous products because they are so affordable this year, but their mascaras have not been doing it for me. We'll start off with the one that I'm wearing. This is the Big Mood Mascara. The wand is just entirely too fat for my little lashes. So if you have small, short lashes, don't get this. <laughs> it's way too big. And the formula for it having so such a big wand. It, it talks big, but it does not, it does not perform. I can barely see my lower lashes, so no. I like the Lash It Loud a little bit better. The applicator is a bit too spiky, in my opinion. I feel like it's a little dangerous. But again, the formula is just subpar. This is better than the Big Mood Mascara, and I liked it for a little bit. I did. But the more that I've used it, well, let me say this. I got this or started using this earlier in the year. This year, I really have been focusing on my lash serums and really paying attention to what mascaras truly do the best job on my eyelashes because I'm such a false lash girl that I never really cared how a mascara worked until really this year. And so I liked this at first, but now that I've compared it to what other mascaras can do, these e.l.f. mascaras, they don't do nothing. <laughs> They don't, so yeah. All right, guys, it is time to finish off with lips. We'll start off with the Makeup by Mario lipsticks. Unfortunately, these are very uncomfortable. They're quite drying. They are not a creamy lipstick formula. I want you to see, they aren't, you know, the driest lipsticks in the world, but just for the reputation that Mario has and what I would expect, there is just so much drag. There's a lot of drag to really get a color to swatch. It's like a stiffer formula. It's not terrible. It's really not, but it's not good. I, I'm i thinking, you know, what can you get at a similar price point in terms of lipsticks? And I'd recommend almost any other other brand <laughs> besides the makeup by Mario. You can get better quality lipsticks, you know, at the drugstore, like especially this one right here, which is Cam. Dang, you gotta drag it out to get it to apply. And it's it's quite uncomfortable. I find the lipsticks to be drying. They are matte formulation, but you know, I've tried bullet form lipsticks that are matte that aren't uncomfortable. That's uncomfortable. So anyways, I don't recommend that. Speaking of uncomfortable, the Makeup Revolution Matte Balm Liquid Lips. Great color range, terrible formula. Patchy, dry, sticky, uncomfortable. They emphasize lines, not, mm, I'm gonna put it on. I do have a little bit of lip gloss, but longevity hasn't been the greatest today. I don't know. I love this color though. Nude Charm. I mean, it says nude as a nude can get, but it's so patchy. Smells delicious though. Like, I want a piece of cake now. It's like buttercream frosting smelling. I'm really into the smell, but don't get this formula. You'll see my full face, just how terrible it is when I'm trying to use it on its own. Another liquid lipstick formula that I am less than excited about are the Pat McGrath Labs liquid lipsticks. These are the oddest formula. They are so extremely thin to the point that they emphasize every single line on your lips. So if you have a lot of lines and whatnot on your lips, you don't have smooth lips, stay away from this formula because this really emphasizes them. They're uncomfortable, they're drying. I do not like this liquid lipstick formula at all. There's so much better ones out there, which is a shame because I do love, 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 love the colors that Pat McGrath came out with. Oh, but I can't get over how wrinkly my lips look when I use that. Next up, I have just a formula that I don't understand. This is from Armani. It's the Ecstasy Mirror. Okay, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a lip gloss, it's a lipstick. I don't know. It has this weird cooling sensation on the lips. It doesn't last long. It's not very pigmented. It only looks pigmented right now because of what I have on underneath, but it looks terrible on its own. It's uncomfortable. It dries down, but it still is a, like a little glossy. It's this odd mixture, I would say, between a lip gloss and a liquid lipstick with like no color to it. It's just weird, man. 
that's all I can say. It's weird. I tried it and I've just been confused ever since about it. Okay, the last product that I have is a lip gloss. This is from Rem Beauty. I hate the packaging on this. It is super duper messy. It's hard to control how much product comes out. It looks like a lab sample and it's quite expensive for what it is. It also has the worst lasting power of a lip gloss ever. It makes whatever color you have underneath, I'm not even kidding, disappear in like two minutes. Like your lip color, gone after this. You won't find it again. It is so weird. I even had it underneath. This is a pretty heavy duty liquid lipstick. Despite its flaws, it lasts a decent amount of time. I put this on top, it was already fading. This is not glossy enough either. You put it on, you're like, okay. Then you spread it out and it's not glossy enough. There's not enough shine and then it just kind of sinks into your lip color and then disappears along with your lip color. It's very, very weird. It's a not good gloss. <laughs> all right, you guys, <laughs> that was everything. Those were all of the worst products of 2021 in my opinion, minus the eyeshadow palettes, which get their own special video. But yeah, like uh, I started to get angry towards the end. I think that has to do with the fact that it is 10.30, way past my personal bedtime. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Stay away from these products. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do that. We are in the middle of Vlogmas where I am posting a new video every single day. So you want to turn that notification bell on to be notified of tomorrow's video. And that's it. I will see you guys tomorrow. I guess have a good one.